some of the devices, including these ones, can be set up so that you can use them either uh, as an iBeacon or as an Edison beacon. So what are the differences between iBeacon and Edison? So iBeacon, uh, as I said, it's Apple standard. Uh, they only transmit uh, a unique ID. Uh, you need uh, to have an app uh, uh, for, for, for that to work. So your app needs to implement uh, API uh, in order to detect uh, Beacon. Also, uh, this works both with iOS and Android, so there are uh, APIs on both platforms to, to use iBeacons. Uh, on the other hand, Edistone is a Google standard. Uh, it's open sourced, and it's a, had, uh, it have a bit more features. Uh, so uh, those features uh, differ from uh, what types of data are transmitted. Uh, so there are three modes, actually, of operation for, for Edistone Beacon. You can set uh, each Edistone Beacon to one of these three. One is uh, Edistone UID. Uh, this is actually uh, same as iBeacon. So you can uh, uh, work it basically the same way. Uh, it transmits the ID. Uh, the other one is Edistone URL. Uh, this, is one, this one is interesting uh, because uh, you can um, you can uh, um, broadcast URL, and you don't really need to have an app for this. So you don't need a user to, to implement your app, to, to use your app in order to detect uh, your beacon. Uh, you will uh, get a notification uh, of nearby Edison URL beacons uh, if you have a Chrome browser installed on your phone. It works both on iOS and Android. Uh, all you need is to actually enable physical web uh, in the options. And I, I believe there are a couple of those uh, beacons that are uh, running uh, inside uh, this building or near this building. And the last one, Edison uh, telemetry. Uh, this one uh, is a bit complex. It uh, uh, emits ID, but also it emits uh, some telemetry information. Uh, though some of these beacons uh, have like uh, temperature sensor or uh, humidity sensor or, or even accelerometer. So uh, with each message transmitted or broadcasted by the beacon, you will get also, besides the ID, you will get also telemetry information, for example, current temperature, humidity, or uh, acceleration if there is one. Uh, Edison Beacons works uh, also with uh, both platforms, so iOS and Android, if you want to have a cross-platform solution. So let's, I, I explained a bit uh, of, of uh, how it works and, and uh, what types of there, but what is actually good for, what, what, uh, what we have, what we gain with this. And the most important things that we get with Beacons is actually physical context. I think this is very, really important uh, to understand because uh, yes, we have a GPS and yes, we have some other location uh, aware uh, APIs that we can use, but they are not precise and they are not reliable. Uh, try to use GPS to, to precisely know where the user is in, in, in a building. It's, it's not useful. So uh, this is... Uh, this gets very cool because you know that uh, when your app detects a beacon, you know that the user is uh, in close proximity of that beacon. So if this beacon is uh, here, I know that uh, if you use my app, all, uh, I know that you are all here. So I can present uh, to you some contextual information that are relevant for you being in this place. Um, this, uh, as I gave an example with the uh, with the museum, also with the uh, cafes and restaurants, you can you, or shops, you can get the coupons or discounts by just entering the shop. Uh, and usually, what you will see in uh, in uh, large uh, uh, shopping malls, there are thousands of beacons, and they are placed in each shop uh, or even uh, in uh, each, uh, in, in several beacons in, in one shop, just in a few corners of, of, of the shops. So uh, if you use, for example, if uh, some shopping mall has an app, you can use, they can provide you with some 
relevant information knowing that you are actually in a, uh, that exactly that shop. If you try to do this with uh, other types of location services, you, you will not get uh, reliable information. So um, let's now talk about uh, how, uh, uh, how we can work with this. So uh, what APIs can we use? Uh, and uh, there are a couple of APIs. Uh, we can use one from the Google. Uh, it's called Google Nearby Notification API. It's really straightforward and simple. Uh, there is uh, uh, SDK for iOS and Android. Uh, also, uh, each manufacturer has its own SDKs. Uh, for example, I'm using, uh, uh, I was using Estimote beacons, these ones, and uh, those have uh, uh, APIs also for Android and, uh, and uh, iOS as well. It's quite simple to use. And of course, if you are building an app for iOS only, you can use Apple SDK for, for accessing beacons. But this is uh, Android conference, so we'll skip that part. So uh, what things we can do uh, with, uh, with these APIs? There are two things we can do. Uh, we can do uh, background monitoring, and uh, uh, for that, this means actually, this is the, the case that I was talking about, so uh, you set up a background monitoring in your app, and whenever a beacon that you, you have ID for it, when, uh, when it's, uh, you are in the range, when the device is in the range of that beacon, uh, your app will get a notification. Uh, another way to use it is when you detect a beacon, you can actually uh, estimate uh, the distance between user and the beacon. And this is called ranging. This is used uh, in some, uh, some manufacturers uh, advertise uh, use of beacons to, to, do, to do indoor navigation by me measuring a distance from a beacon and doing some um, Math to, to get the, the precise location. The problem with the ranging is actually it's not really re reliable. You, can, you cannot get uh, really uh, up to do like a meter uh, pre precision. Uh, so you usually know if you are near the beacon or you are far off the beacon. There are lots of things uh, when used indoors that can um, uh, disrupt the signal, so I, I, the, the signal strength cannot be measured uh, correctly. So uh, I would not recommend uh, to, to use this as a reliable source of, of, of uh, measuring the distance. Also, if you use extensively this method, uh, then you will drain the battery of your phone really quickly. So another thing. And in both cases, you need to uh, actually, uh, you need to, to know IDs of your beacons in order to, to detect them. Uh, and you, if you, you are building an app for a big shopping mall where, where there is like thousands of beacons, it's really hard to, to manage all, all those IDs, locations, etc. So for that, uh, Google helped us uh, and uh, Google created a beacon dashboard. Beacon dashboard is uh, actually a, a cloud registry of beacons. Quite simple tool, but just lets you not think about how to manage all your beacons. There are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, additionally, you can uh, manage your own infrastructure, so your own beacon, list of beacons, set their locations, uh, their IDs, etc. And uh, they, um, you can also, uh, using the power of Google Cloud to actually share those, uh, those, that infrastructure to be used by other parties, other apps. Or you can even build, uh, uh, make it public, so anyone can build an app that uses your beacons. This is actually what uh, Amsterdam, city of Amsterdam did. They put uh, lots, of, uh, um, lots of beacons throughout the city. And they make a website, and they also put everything in the, this uh, beacon dashboard and may, made available to anyone who wants to create an app that uses public beacons. Uh, so it's quite a cool thing. And the UI uh, of, of the dashboard is quite simple and easy to use, so it's really no brainer. So 
I believe that uh, this is uh, one of the most important uh, uh, things um, in this talk to, to, to talk about the use cases. Uh, I think you, I tried to explain uh, uh, a gist of, of what beacons are and how they can be used, but to get a sense of uh, their potential, uh, I'll now talk about some use cases, and I will go through a list of uh, several uh, industries where where this can be used. Uh, and we'll start with the retail industry, uh, as this this is where it all started, and uh, I believe this is where the beacons are now mostly used. So, uh, as I said before, uh, one of the interesting things uh, here is uh, actually uh, getting uh, coupons or discounts etc so uh, people likes discounts and uh, if you can uh, target to get uh, them uh, at the right time at the right location this actually can make uh, make some conversions uh, so example is you are passing by a shop and it will tell you okay we have a discount uh, uh, 20% on, on, on this uh, pair of shoes, etc. Uh, other, uh, other things that can be done is actually if you set the range of beacon which you can do to, to uh, emit uh, in a short range uh, signal, so up to a few meters, then you can actually put that beacon on a shelf where you know that you have this type of uh, shoes or this, this dress. And when uh, a user is nearby, so in the range of that beacon, you know that they are actually looking or trying this dress or, or shoes. And you can say, for example, if you, they, they are using your app, you can just uh, give them notification, hey, uh, I see that uh, you are interested in these shoes. Keep in mind that we have uh, these shoes in different colors uh, in, uh, in our online store. You, would you like to order it now or, or try it in an, another shop? And uh, this is for, for, for a quite neat uh, use case for a short range uh, scenario. But also you can put one uh, beacon outside your shop and, and when the people are passing by, you can say to them like, uh, hey, uh, from your wish list of these items, uh, we have three of them in our shop, you can buy it right now. Or you can press a button and uh, someone from the inside the shop will prepare for you the, the order, you just pick, pick it up. Uh, and uh, this is just some, some things that you can do uh, inside the retail store. Okay, sorry. Sorry about this. Uh, um, the next industry I'll talk about is hospitality. Um, this one is uh, interesting for the hotels and restaurants mainly. Uh, so, the, for hotels, for example, you can do automated check-ins. Check so, when you are in the lobby of the hotel, if you're using their app, uh, the app can notify the reception that uh, you are here, you need to check in, and they will prepare all the documents, keys, etc. so you can do that uh, really fast. You can also do, uh, uh, you can unlock the door of your, uh, um, of your room by just being in front of the door and the door would automatically open. However, I'm not sure about the security aspect of this. Um, again, uh, for the restaurants, one interesting case is actually ordering food. So if you put beacons on the table, so you have one beacon for, for each table, you could actually make an app, app to order the food. So uh, you will just go into restaurant, sit at the table, open the app, the app will know at which table you are, you can order food and food will just come to your table. Um, again, also with the retail, you, co you could also use uh, beacons to advertise discounts uh, and coupons, uh, etc. So, uh, lots of different uh, um, use cases to, to actually help uh, people do what they want to do at the, a certain place. Uh, transportation is very interesting, at least for me, uh, and uh, I also did some uh, proof of concept uh, for some clients uh, regarding this. 
and one thing that you can do uh, is to put uh, beacons on uh, bus stops and uh, uh, for example if a driver has a, an app uh, it can also uh, um, sense that data that the bus is at a certain stop. Uh, on some projects uh, we had some issues where we needed to locate uh, precisely where the bus is and with the, with the GPS location it's not always uh, reliable and this, this will help definitely. And also for the, for the travelers you, you, can, you can just get into in front of the bus station and you will get notification when the next uh, bus is coming. You, don't, you just don't need to, to, to find the, the timetable or, or look for the screen, etc. It will just pop up the notification and you will say, okay, yeah, I have a two minutes to catch the, the next bus or train, etc. Also, uh, uh, you, could, you could use that uh, to pay uh, for your ride ticket. You just enter the bus, the, the phone detects that you're in a certain bus and you can, you can just uh, notify uh, that you are you are in the bus using the the ride. So after that, uh, you will just get out. No checkout needed. Uh, the phone will detect everything, and uh, you will be billed uh, at the end of the month with uh, however how much you you take in the the rides. Uh, and on airports, for example, it could be useful to monitor long queues. For example, if you have a, a big rush and uh, there is lots of people waiting in the security line. You could uh, add beacons there, and uh, people, uh, based uh, on what they are, what plane they are catching, they, they might get the priority uh, to get faster, just not to to, to weigh them later. So uh, there there are lots of lots of things where where you could uh, uh, help people uh, and and make the the better experience uh, uh, for them uh, in some really normal situations. Uh, the last one is uh, corporate and uh, uh, this one is actually uh, interesting for, for, for all of you, you could actually implement these things in your own companies. Uh, you could put beacons inside conference rooms and get notification when you enter the room until when the, this, the, the conference room is available. Uh, some uh, companies put uh, beacons, small beacons, uh, uh, attach them to the laptops, projectors, etc. So if they get lost in, somewhere in the building, they could find them easily. Um, so these are the, 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 the use cases and I believe that you will come up with much more of them. I hope so. Uh, this is something that I found out that people are actually using and uh, it's, it's really nice. So in conclusion, uh, beacons are really simple technology, uh, really cheap and simple and they are available to uh, both mobile platforms. So you can use them uh, to uh, um, augment uh, the experience uh, users have of your app. You can uh, provide them uh, with, uh, with such services that, that will make them uh, go by their lives much easier. And I, I believe this is uh, one of the greatest potentials of this technology. So thank you. Uh, we have still some time uh, for questions. So feel free. One quick question. Yep. Uh, the range is being understood by the beacon or the mobile phone? Sorry? The range is being understood, for example, we say one meter, and uh, this range is being understood on the mobile side or on the beacon side? So you, you set up a beacon to, uh, to have a certain level of, of signal, so signal strength. And uh, uh, on the mobile side, the OS will will get the uh, info on how the how it how strong the signal is when it's picked up. So based on the signal strength, you can uh, then APIs can uh, determine what would be the the distance. So it affects the battery usage. Yes. Oh, okay. Not too much because this is actually Bluetooth low energy, so it's not really that much battery consumption. But uh, yeah. 
Uh, hi. Uh, hi, thanks for the talk, first of all. Um, so we have a beacon installation, or our SDK supports beacons, and we are currently in the process of updating to Android O. And Android O supports or limits the background processes. And I just want to ask you, because the library we are currently using is Alt Beacon. It's not the one you mentioned, but it's a third party library. Okay. And it's, um, they released a, a blog post recently, and they mentioned that the, under Android O, you can only um, scan for beacons every 15 minutes or even longer. So can you comment on that? Um, I haven't looked into that part, uh, but I would guess that uh, there is option that you can set up uh, your app to have a foreground service, uh, which requires notification, of course. It's not that pretty, but in, in case you have a foreground service, I guess the limits are not that uh, uh, pronounced. I'm not sure. I, I haven't uh, really uh, uh, looked into, into that. More questions? Okay, then. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you have oh, sorry, one more question. Yeah. Uh, we use uh, beacons in our company for a while, and uh, we have problem because the uh, produ producer said that uh, it will uh, work for uh, about one year, and, uh, it, and, and the battery was about for one, one month or two months, because we um, use higher fr uh, frequency, uh, so how you handle that problem? Um, well, th this is mostly a question for manufacturers, but you can set up beacons to use different uh, uh, signal strengths and uh, frequency of, of, of uh, uh, broadcasting. Um, if you need uh, big uh, uh, increased signal strength and the frequency, I guess you will need uh, to work with manufacturer to get you uh, beacons with a bigger battery or, or like to put it where the, they will have a constant power supply, something like that. 